Yeah. Welcome to Shamar Easter signing day. Uh, spam risk. Someone's got a spam risk right here. Um, I was fortunate enough to bring three of our uh, new coaches. Mark Marcus Woodson came over with me, and uh, he's done a great job since he's been here. We got him from Florida State. I'm sure you'll want to ask him questions here in a minute. And Dan, of course, Dan and Enos is back, getting the band back together a little bit, and uh, decided he's back here. And uh, Darren Wilson uh, was our newest hire, and and uh, you guys, I, I want you to have enough time here to talk to them because you'll you'll enjoy each and every one of them. They're outstanding men, outstanding ball coaches. But uh, uh, I'm I'm really honored that they chose the University of Arkansas to come coach uh, with me. Um, since we talked, we've added three guys on offense and three guys on defense um, since our December signing. Uh, Tyrone Roden from Bowling Green, Isaac Tesla from Hillsdale College, Trajan Jeffcoat from Missouri, Al Walcott from Baylor, Lorando Snacks Johnson from Baylor, and and obviously we just talked about Shamar. So we we went uh, three offense, three defense in those additions. We've we signed twenty high school players. I believe that that should be our minimum. You know, times change. Uh, I think. Uh, the portal window and the signing date and all that stuff. I think we still have to look at that, but uh, we need to recruit high school players. And so we were fortunate enough to sign 20 there. We've signed 10 transfers so far, and we have nine scholarships uh, still remaining. Of that group, we've had, we signed a total of four wideouts, two tight ends, two quarterbacks, a running back, and four O linemen. On and that makes us 13 on offense, 17 on defense, with five D linemen, four linebackers, and eight DBs. Twelve high school kids are here. Eight of them are going to graduate in May and be here in June. Of those 20, uh, 10 transfers, and they're all here. Portal wise, uh, to this point, we've gone three wide receivers, a running back, a linebacker, two DBs, and two D linemen. So I'm really excited about where we are. Uh, change uh, certainly can be looked at however you'd like, but I like to look at it as we try to change to get better. And uh, I believe that's what we've done. So I'm open to any questions and thank you for weathering the storm out there, the, the, the conditions. Coach, it wasn't big numbers in Arkansas, but you managed to keep home the kids you offered with Easter right. finalizing and that. How big was it to keep everybody in the state that you offered a scholarship to? Well, our number one goal each year is to keep everyone that we've offered in in, in the state. And uh, we've done that uh, pretty well. Uh, we I think we lost one maybe a year ago or two years ago, but um, uh, we want to, we, our, our high school coaches in the state are tremendous to us. Uh, we want to, we want to be good to them as well, but uh, guys, I just feel like the fourth quarter comes, and I think it means uh, a lot to everybody. A little, maybe a little bit more to a guy that's been born and raised as a hog fan. And uh, we certainly uh, have a lot in next year's class that we're looking at. It seems to be a pretty good class in the state, uh, but it means everything to us. And there's a lot of people that help us. That's parents. That's uh, public. Uh, that's coaches. I know you, you, the nine scholarships left. I know there's still spring ball and everything, but right now, portal wise, what what would you say are the needs the most with those nine right now? Well, as you know, there's 85 um, scholarships, and we're at 76. So once you get to 76, if you look at it at NFL pattern, you know they're at 53, and they seem to be able to get pretty good players out there. Um, so I think right now would be the best players available. Um, I'm talking about scholarship wise. In other words, I'm not saying ne necessarily the necessity at the position. I'm talking about the number of people at the position. Uh, you know, we could use another bigger guy inside on D line just again, because of numbers. Uh, linebacker might need another because of numbers. Secondary, we've signed eight to this point. Uh, we certainly would entertain, you know, other others there. Um, 
you know, I'd like to look at another guy could snap the ball offensively. We, 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 we've got to find maybe one more, um, you know, in, uh, losing the guys last year, a bunch of those guys could snap, you know, obviously Ricky played center, but Jones could snap, you know, and, and so, uh, we've got to continue to look at that on offense. I think we're probably – we've got enough running backs, number of running backs, wide receivers. Uh, we may be full there as well, but we'd certainly take a dynamic one. Tight end, we might need an older tight end. I, I don't know uh, number-wise say that we do. Um, and then quarterbacks, we, we've got enough quarterbacks uh, at this point. So uh, I think that's where we'd go. I don't know if I answered your question, but but that's where we'd look at. I know you've had to have an offensive coordinator idea in your mind for a while with Kendall. So when did you start, when did you make contact with Dan and how do you think he's going to meld into what you're doing offensively? Like currently, how, how is his philosophies meld into this? Well, uh, I guess the first part of your question is as soon as I found out that there was interest for coach to, to leave, um, uh, maybe, I don't know, 10 minutes after that, maybe, or five or three. And then, uh, um, you know, I, I've had respect for Dan Eno for a long, long time. You know, I talked to Jamie last night. It's just different. You know, when I was here the first time, he was my boss, you know, and now I'm working with him in a different role. And uh, I think you hire good people that are confident in themselves, uh, but yet yeah, confident in guys they're working with, too. I was very comfortable working with him, and I hope uh, he feels the same about me. Uh, offensive, offensively, I think he he can answer a question better than me, but uh, Dan has always, you know, here, whether it be at Alabama, where it be at Maryland, uh, they've always ran a, an offense around their personnel and their talents, and all that starts at, in my opinion, the quarterback position. Uh, Dan obviously knew coming here what we have at quarterback, and and uh, uh, we're going to use uh, KJ's abilities to the fullest, and along with you know Rocket and you know all the other all the other guys. But uh, um, I'm an offensive line coach for a reason. I you know I like to run the ball, and Dan fit in that philosophy as well. But the, the bottom line is we got to just score more points than they do, and uh, I, I really like since since Dan's. Uh, left Arkansas he's been in uh, multiple uh, formations multiple sets multiple offensive philosophies uh, that I think he can adjust and will uh, around any of the personnel that we have you got pretty young on the defensive side with your coaches yeah what do you think about the mesh between all the new guys have you seen the... Marcus Woodson or no have you seen him I mean he, he... go ahead now uh, I, I'm messing with you Marcus um, um, you know, uh, when I interviewed Travis Williams, and I think I said this before, so I won't belabor the point. I knew he was the guy. I knew he was. I knew, uh, you know, what's, what's some of the major concerns you have in football right now? One of them is the portal. Uh, so, you know, you're going to have kids going into the portal and you're going to, you're either going to beg an average player to stay or you're going to say, okay, we're going to go out and have a capabilities upgrading our team and replacing it. Uh, that's one of the reasons uh, uh, that, that uh, Travis, obviously a very aggressive defensive guy, but you know, right now the portal makes you, you better. And I've always been this way, but even more so now you better hire recruiters and recruiters are usually good people. And, uh, so I did that with him. And then Marcus Woodson is, uh, I thought he was the best defensive back coach in America. And I think what they did at Florida state proved that, uh, but he's a better man and, uh, um, they're recruiting machines now. I mean, they're, they're, I was trying to watch a basketball game, talk four or five, six guys last night. Um, and then Darren Wilson is the same deal i mean comes from a from a, a family of, of a coach a very well respected coach a respected recruiter uh in in his daddy frank um but he, you know he's different you know he's a different guy you know he's not he's not his daddy he's he's he has louisiana ties excuse me his uncle i'm sorry um he's not his uncle but he's 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 got 
uh, Louisiana ties. And uh, we need to get involved in that state a little bit more. So that helped us there. Um, and Marcus will explain kind of how that goes in the secondary. But I look forward to those two guys working together. You know, the kind of co-defensive coordinator route. Um, just how do you see those kind of roles defi being defined? Sorry. Well, Travis, will, Tra Travis Williams is defense coordinator. And, and um, Marcus is the co. In other words, Marcus is going to handle everything in the back end. He's 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 the man back there, and uh, um, certainly he's going to have the help of Darren. But but he's the secondary. He's the main secondary guy, and and when they meet together, I'm assuming his voice will be heard uh, uh, quite a little bit. Um, but Travis Williams is our coordinator, and uh, and uh, Marcus certainly uh, deserved the co defensive coordinator title because of his experience and what he's going to bring to us. And to be honest with you, there's no way I could hire him just as a secondary coach because he's earned that right to be a coordinator. See him and Coach Wilson kind of splitting up duties with the secondary. I don't know. You have to ask those guys, you know. Uh, really, I'm serious. You have to ask them because uh, I'm going to let them split it up however they want to. Coach, uh what was the connection with Darren Wilson? I mean, we can, Marcus Woodson, we can trace that obviously. Uh, yeah. But with uh, Wilson, looks like maybe he was, maybe not out of nowhere, but. Yeah, well, he was, he was rising now. I mean, he was going from Florida to LSU to another university that offered him, you know, same day we did, or maybe we was a half a step ahead of him, but um, in the SEC as well. Um, but, um, uh, Marcus and Travis had done a lot of interviewing, uh, Zoom interviewing, and and uh, you know when I got Darren on the phone, I knew he was a guy we we needed to hire. That he came highly recommended uh, through the Zoom interviews, and of course I knew some people that knew him, and and uh, uh, but that's how he, how I became. He just we zoomed a lot of guys, we interviewed a lot of guys, and and uh, we asked him to the prom first, and. He said he'd come, so that was that was great. With Shamar, obviously, he's the only. He would, probably would have signed early if he hadn't had shake up at tight end coach and stuff. But um, I, I guess what was that process like with because he did take a visit to South Carolina yeah. and, and kind of reeling him back in. Well, Coach Turner did a great job. I mean, he really did of of building a relationship, and uh, you know, I think Shamar wanted to come to Arkansas, you'd have to ask him. I think he wanted to come to Arkansas for a long, long time. Uh, anytime there's change, sometimes there becomes panic in it. You know, obviously uh, recruiters will tell you, well, you know, you need to go visit here. You need to visit there. And if you trust those people, then you do, you know, but uh, certainly uh, more Arkansas State or Arkansas and, uh, and uh, Coach Turner just uh, – uh, Coach Turner's got a way about him, you know. Um, obviously, he's got a lot of guys that went to the NFL, so he had that. But as a person, knowledge, coach, uh, he's really, really good. And uh, I think Shamar thought that once he once he went and visited another school and he came back, I think he thought that he could benefit staying at home a little bit more. So during your last radio show at the Catfish, so you touched on something real briefly about in-person evaluation and how important that is to getting to know the players, being able to talk to their coaches, their neighbors, their friends. Mm -hmm. uh, how different was that this year, uh, maybe versus what you've gone through the last couple of years with the restrictions? I'm the embarrassed to tell you a little bit about uh, December because, you know, December um, was fast and furious in a lot of ways. And to be honest with you, I saw everybody – uh, that was that signed with this. I saw went into all their homes and all that kind of stuff. But it was kind of the fast and the furious because you had you know we had the bowl that we're preparing for, and then I just don't I don't know if our coaches were able to do as good a job getting back after I did. I was you know we lords of blessings with a jet, and, you know, and we can fly around and all those things. But I, I don't think you really know somebody until you get around them until you get in their home until you get in their school uh, I think it helps you uh, when times are tough 
uh, understand where they come from and what their needs are and things of that nature. And uh, I, I just don't know that we can have playoffs, bowls, portal, lose two or three coaches. And at that point, it was all, you know, two positions to coordinators and a coordinator to a head coach. They're all wonderful things. But how are you going to hire? And, you know, the fans, they want you to hire a guy, you know, before the other guy leaves, you know. And and I, I couldn't do that on defense because we were, we were, you know, out on the road trying to get to 23 homes in five days. And and then the portal guys, and oh, the only time you can see them on Tuesday or Wednesday, well, I'm in Georgia, you know. And it's the only time, well, if you don't come back or you don't send one of your coaches back, it's a mess. Uh, but we're going we're gonna to run high school recruiting if we don't close that portal down before we sign high school kids. Were we able to do recruiting, say, like via Zoom? Uh, do you think that contributed yeah. to mis-evaluations in, in recruiting? Uh, yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that. And then at the same time, you, you don't have camps. Well, you you want to make them – you, you want to not make a mistake. And you – so you're, what's the highest percentage you could not make a mistake? And that is have them on campus and see them do the specific skill set, skill drills set that you want to see. And um, you might miss on character, you know, you might, but you shouldn't miss on athletic ability. And during that time, and it was basically two years, uh, you didn't see anybody work out. You know, you didn't see them do any type of skill set. They might send you a film and, you know, you're lifting 400 pounds. Well, that means you're strong, but, you know, can you, can you maintain your feet? Can you get out of the way? Can, you know, what is it? Uh, yes, I think so. And, and uh, we should have less and less of that in the future of, of guys uh, who it's not their fault, but it's our fault who we might have, you know, over recruited. Feel more comfortable about this year's class. I do. I really like this class. You no, know, now eight of them's not here. But this class here, I'm talking about the high school kids, and I and I like the 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 college guys too. But the high school kids, this is as 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 good of a I'm talking about work ethic, uh, non needy uh, class, and it's only twelve now. So we'll have to ask me again when the eight, other eight get here. But just a group that wants to work. Uh, I really really like this. They're a mature uh, group of guys. Coach, I think you talked about Armstrong the last time, but yeah. uh, your two other receivers you've added to Slaw and, and Broden, what do they bring to the table? And it's kind of an interesting group of guys coming from the FCS, D2, and yeah. the MAC. Uh, is there any concern at all with them making the jump to the SEC? Well, there wasn't with us or all those other SEC offers they had. Um, but um, – and I didn't mean that. I mean, there was a lot of people didn't, you know, yes, sure. There's a concern, you know, I played at Pittsburgh state, you know, if I went in the portal, I'd have stayed in the portal, you know, but, but there's different guys that play D2 ball, you know what I mean? And, uh, you know, we brought in, you know, the nose guard from, uh, red big Ridge and he seemed to work out. Okay. Uh, there's always a concern of, why did they go there in the first place? And each one of them have their stories of why they went there. But talent-wise, um, uh, no, uh, not talent-wise. And and workout, I'm excited for y'all to be able to come watch them in the spring uh, because they're, they're very talented and, and they're hungry. You know, that's the one good thing about, you know, recruiting guys that are a little bit uh, D2, FCS. You know, they haven't been, you know, given academic – money and you know they, they're trying to scrape by and are you paying for my books this year coach and stuff like that we're here it's you know they're appreciative i guess what i should say and also uh, i think zach williams ladarius bishop and nathan baxter the three guys we don't know if they they haven't announced that they're coming back are they returning and could you give us an update on them Bax, who bishop and zach williams um uh, they're working out really hard if they're not. I mean, I don't know how to say it. I, mean, I don't want – I don't know if they had a big, you know, banquet set for it or, you know, I don't know. But they seem to be working out every day pretty hard. I, maybe they're getting ready for the draft. I, I don't know. I'll, I'll let you ask them. 
I don't know. Thanks, Chris. All right.